Okay, welcome back. And today we're going to be exploring what are the best free resources for learning and practicing Buddhist meditation on the internet. So before doing this video, I did a search to try to find more free resources to see if there's anything I want to add. And I found a lot of lists listing the best free resources. And most of them were pretty terrible in the sense that they were these short guided meditations and they didn't offer a lot of guidance for the larger path of meditation and Buddhism. I'm sure there's a lot more out there that I'm not going to list in this video, but these are ones that I know are really good that I can really genuinely recommend to check out. So some of these practices, traditions, teachers, I'm more familiar with than others, and a few of them I'm definitely going to be doing more intro videos around, basically intro to these systems, what you need to know to start practicing, and what these systems are all about. So the first one is one that's very close to my heart, one that I've studied quite a bit, probably more than any other meditation system, and it's Shinzen Young and Unified Mindfulness. So Shinzen is absolutely a Buddhist teacher. He teaches Buddhism, but Unified Mindfulness is not Buddhist. And Shinzen Young actually doesn't even consider himself a Buddhist. So all of these ideas, practices, all pulled from Buddhism, but Shinzen is very science-minded and he wants to get rid of all the dogma, all the tradition, and just focus on what are the most effective practices that actually help people and that lead to real progress in meditation. So the great thing about Shinzen is that he offers a whole paradigm for understanding meditation and he also helps you understand how you can progress in meditation by talking about these three attentional skills that we build while meditating. These are concentration, clarity, equanimity, and I talk about these a lot on the channel. So I'm going to leave some links in the description that will give you more of a clear idea of what these things are and how you can practice these. And really understanding these principles will help you gauge where you're at with meditation and where you need to be, what you need to work on to improve. So that's what I love about Shinzen system is it's very comprehensive, it's very complete, it gives you a lot of options, but on the downside, it's kind of complicated. So it's a lot for a beginner to absorb. If you wanna hit the ground running with meditation and just dive right into practices, it's probably not the best system. It's really for people who are a bit more committed to learning and who really want to develop the practice and understand what's happening, the whole process of meditation. The main practice that Shinzen teaches is a Vipassana style of noting, noting these three domains of experience, which is seeing, hearing, and feeling. And you can note these in our outer world. You know, we can see, hear, and feel things in our outer world. But the real power of the practice is when we apply it to our inner world, when we're meditating, and we note visual images, you know, thoughts, visual thoughts, auditory uh, talk, like self-talk, and then feelings, feelings in the body. And now Shinzen gives you a lot of ways, a lot of options for combining these practices and also gives some other complementary practices. So again, there's a lot here. It's a highly customizable system. There's a lot of great stuff to it. If you're a nerd like me, it's one of the best things you can study. It's really going to open up your mind to all these new possibilities and dimensions of awareness. But ultimately, it takes a bit of a time investment to really learn and get comfortable with, as the noting can be kind of clunky to start with. Now, the best intro to his system is a free course he offers, which I'm going to link, as well as there's this old document called Five Ways to Know Yourself, which is like a 180-page PDF document but it's really clear and I actually read it all through in like two days or something when I first found it. It's old and it says there's a new one coming, a more unified system, but it's still extremely relevant. So I'm gonna to link to those and through Shinzen's website and through the Unified Mindfulness website, you can find a lot more resources and also he has a YouTube channel which is really fantastic and he gets really deep in the YouTube channel. He dives super deep into stuff that if you're a beginner, it might just be like gibberish but I find it incredibly interesting. So to sum up, the Shinzen system is great because it's comprehensive and has infinite depth, but there's also a lot of terminology to learn and the noting style may be kind of clunky, may take a while to get comfortable with. Okay, so the second style of practice or resource is one I've been digging a lot and doing a lot lately. It's called Tranquil Wisdom Insight Meditation. It's actually a pretty new tradition, although it comes from very old texts. And the real essence of this practice is just feeling good, is cultivating tranquility. It's actually about smiling while you practice. So in this practice, one of the cornerstones is smiling. Using a memory of some time that you felt good or imagining something that makes you feel good and then meditating on that feeling and letting that 
just overtake you. So what I love about this practice is it's simple and that you get in this positive feedback loop. As you're practicing, you feel good and that helps you focus better and it actually makes you want to practice more. Now, the downsides of this is if you're feeling very heavy and you're trying to smile and you're trying to feel good and it's not working, you can feel this inner conflict around it. It may not be the best practice to do in those cases. In those cases, it's better to actually probably meditate with the difficulty, whatever the emotion is, and just be with that. But it can be good to just kind of smile at that and bring that more into this kind of acceptance, bring the warmth and acceptance with the smile to the difficult feeling. The other thing that might not be as powerful with this practice, especially when you contrast it to Shinzen, is that you're not deconstructing your experience as much. So a lot of Vipassana style of meditation is about deconstructing your thoughts and feelings, bringing them more into clarity, not identifying with them, and that can really be powerful to translate into your everyday waking awareness. In this practice, you're just cultivating this kind of good feeling and you're letting that carry into your day. Personally, I think that these are deeply complementary. If I were to give a beginner one, I would give them the Tranquil Wisdom Insight Meditation, the Smiling Meditation, because I think it's gonna be the most approachable, the easiest to kind of get the ball rolling. And then if they hit some challenges, if their thoughts keep coming up in intense ways, I would say, okay, let's work at deconstructing those thoughts. Let's look at the underlying energy behind those thoughts, why those thoughts keep coming up, how they're coming up for you, all of that. And all of that is in Shinzen system or, or more or less. So Shinzen system is pretty well balanced in that we look at concentration, clarity, and equanimity with a, a relative balance where you're working on all three. Whereas Tranquil Wisdom Insight Meditation, you're really focusing on cultivating this positive attitude, this positive feeling, and you're working on concentration. So the skills of clarity and equanimity aren't going to be worked on as much, although those will absolutely get there if you keep practicing. So although a lot of practices start in different places and feel very different, if you go really deep with them, you're going to build the same skills, maybe in different proportions, but it's all going more or less to the same place. So there's some great teachers in this Tranquil Wisdom Insight Meditation tradition. I will link them down below in the description. There's some great uh, guided practices on the Insight Timer app. There's great guided practices on their website, on YouTube. It's all going to be there in the link. And there's also about a 60 page PDF that gives you everything you need to know and it's it's really like not densely written so although it's 60 pages it's really more like probably 12 pages of content so you can read that quite quickly quite easily and that will give you the basics just the fundamentals of what this practice is about and how to practice it so the next two resources are very much related because they are put out there by the same guy although they are quite different so we're going to start with mastering the core teachings of the buddha which is a free ebook a very long free ebook. It's like, I don't know, 1500 pages or something crazy by Daniel Ingram. Now I made a video about the best Buddhist books that you haven't heard of. And this was, I think the first one I talked about. And I talked about it being somewhat controversial, but not for the reasons you might think. The reason this book is controversial is because Daniel Ingram essentially said that he's enlightened or awakened. And that kind of pissed off a lot of the old school traditional Buddhists who think it's not good that you shouldn't be making these claims. Now, Daniel Ingram did a really great job defending himself and why he made these claims on the 10% Happier podcast that you can check out. I will also link to that because it's a great intro to Daniel Ingram, who he is, what he's about, how he thinks about these things. Daniel's argument is really that he wanted to inspire people and show it's possible. A lot of these Buddhist traditions talk about awakening as something that will happen in many lifetimes if we're a good Buddhist. There's not this reality that we can awaken in this lifetime. That's not really presented to us. And this was more or less true for my experience when I was younger studying Buddhism. People weren't really talking about it like it was a real thing. That being said, I was very lucky that I met a guy who was awakened, who did a lot of meditation in, in a Zen tradition and actually had a really profound awakening experience. And he actually was my therapist for four years and was one of my main teachers in my 20s. Remarkable guy, super inspiring. And he showed me, yes, it is possible. And so I really like Daniel Ingram and I respect what he's doing. And it's really worked. He's inspired a lot of people to commit to practice, to get super serious about it, and a lot of his students or friends or people he's connected with have actually woken up and achieved these levels of realization. 
Now, the other thing that Daniel is criticized for is being too rigid around his maps of awakening, that he has some very specific maps in the book about you get to this level and then this happens and then there's a dark night and then this happens. He gets so specific and a lot of people say, well, it's not exactly like that. It may or may not conform to those rules. And there's pros and cons around looking at the maps. You know, the pro would be that it would be validating to your experience that you would see where you are in the map and say, oh, great. I, this is okay. I'm not just a failure that things naturally get harder at this stage. And this is very true for Daniel's experience where he first found out about these maps. He was in a hard time and it showed him that, oh no, this is supposed to be hard in this time and things are going to get better on the other side. So that's the value of maps, that they can be validating, they can be encouraging, they can make us feel less lost and motivate us to keep practicing. On the other hand, Maps can make us very strivy. They can make us try to achieve things or really focus on results. And there's this weird paradox around meditation and achievement where you're absolutely trying to get better and trying to achieve results, but focusing on the goals is not at all helpful. You actually have to surrender to wherever you are. So looking ahead too far is not helpful. And that's really part of the paradox and the pros and cons of maps. So it does take some maturity to navigate them properly. And also where you are might not actually fit on a map so neatly. That's another possibility. So it may make you feel even more lost if you can't locate yourself. All that being said, Daniel Ingram is a brilliant Buddhist teacher. He is remarkably knowledgeable about Buddhism and he's really great at communicating it in a fresh, direct way to help you understand what is important in Buddhism. What are the aspects of Buddhism that are actually going to impact your life, that are actually going to help you awaken, help you change on a deep fundamental level? And he makes it super clear in the book. He emphasizes exactly what I feel like needs to be emphasized. And I learned so much reading his book. A lot of ideas in Buddhism that I had heard over and over again became a lot more clear. The downside or one of the limitations of his book is the particular style of practice, of noting practice that he teaches, is not really my vibe and it might not work for a lot of people. It's more of this super intense open awareness where you're just really trying to be aware of everything happening all the time. And I think that could be exhausting for people. It can make that strivy effort, effortful part come out too much and it might not really be the right thing. That's the other area he's been criticized. People say that the style of practice he teaches isn't really traditionally taught. Uh, that's debatable, I would say. I think he uh, takes issue with that. But that being said, I really like the book for the theory, for looking at all the ideas, for looking at uh, the philosophy of Buddhism more so than the practice instruction. That's my personal take. I know people who really vibe and really jive with the practice instruction, so it's up to you to decide. And honestly, it's an excellent resource on understanding Buddhism. I really like the way that he writes and I like his attitude where it's like a little off the cuff and a little, uh, some people would say he has a chip on his shoulder and there's kind of good reason for that because he's been criticized a lot, but I feel like him defending himself so much and writing all these replies to all the criticisms might not always be the most skillful thing, although it's up to you to decide. Overall, I really like Daniel Ingram. I really like the book. I would highly recommend it. Now, the next book or resource is called Fire Casino Practice, and it is also co-authored by Daniel Ingram along with Shannon Stein, and there's a few other people who contributed. Fire Casino Practice is actually a super cool practice. It's very simple. Anyone can do it, and I would definitely 100% recommend checking it out. You basically just light a candle, keeping it at eye level and then stare into the candle, into the kind of brightest part of the candle and then close your eyes and then just pay attention to that afterburn on the back of your eyes or on your eyelids or whatever it is, that kind of dark space when you close your eyes and you just focus on that and watch it change. Allow it to change because it will over time and you stay with the image, the afterburn image on your eyes until it's gone and you can't see it anymore. And then you open your eyes again, stare at the candle again, 30 seconds a minute, and then close them again. And this is the practice. And it seems like a simple practice, but things can get super cool and kind of trippy. A lot of people, when they do this practice for long periods of time, especially on retreats, they have really intense uh, trippy experiences. 
And this is one of the main uh, practices that Daniel Ingram teaches now because he has found it's so fun and so effective that people get the same kind of insights that they get out of a more open traditional Vipassana practice, but that they also get tons of other cool stuff happening. So it's more engaging, more fun. People get more excited around it. So there's a whole website dedicated to this practice and on the website, you can read people's experiences. You can read all sorts of practice advice. And there's a free PDF ebook you can download that also talks about the history of the practice. It's a very old practice. It actually exists in a number of traditions, but they mostly rely on one particular tradition, one set of kind of old texts. And it's super interesting and quite fun. For someone like me who finds it hard to focus on certain types of practices, this one is more engaging because things are really happening and they're changing and it's kind of interesting to watch the things happen. So if you have trouble focusing on whatever practice you're doing, try this one out. It may work. Now, one of the challenges with this practice, I was doing it in Costa Rica in these like kind of open air spaces was the candle would flicker too much because of the breeze coming through. We didn't have windows that could close. And so that could be a challenge if you're not in a place where there can be kind of a still candle light. But they also say you can actually do it with a light bulb or even an LED light or even the LED light on your phone. So you don't actually have to use a candle, although candle light is pretty nice. And, you know, it feels good to be in a candlelit room. So I would definitely recommend trying it with a candle. So again, links in the description. Definitely check this one out if it sounds interesting to you. And finally, the last really great resource that I haven't really dove into too deep, but I really wanted to share is the Plum Village meditation app. So Plum Village is Thich Nhat Hanh's uh, Sangha, his kind of big monastery community in Vietnam. Thich Nhat Hanh, if you don't know who he is, he was one of the kind of most popular Buddhist teachers of our times, probably only second really to the Dalai Lama. He was an amazing person. He lived to be in his 90s. He really just passed away recently, which is why there's a good chance that you've heard of him. And he wrote many books and also did a lot of community outreach, helping children, helping communities. He was just a remarkable, inspiring person, and he was a great teacher. Now, his teachings, from my experience, seem to be kind of diverse, where it's not like just one focused practice. And that, again, is good because it gives people lots of options, but it can also be daunting for beginners. That being said, the app does have a number of different practices, some that are more basic and then some that are more focused on various other things. It's very much worth exploring. It's very Buddhist. It feels like, you know, that kind of uh, religious Buddhist vibe for better or worse. Some people like that thing. Some people are averse to that. I don't mind it so much, but I do have a subtle aversion when people are like quoting scripts and stuff because I really care more about what is your experience of this? What is the experience people around you have of this more so than what people experienced of this thousands of years ago? So all that being said, the Plum Village app is quite a good app. There's a lot of stuff on it, a lot of content, a lot of features. I would highly recommend checking it out if you're looking for a meditation app. It's actually not what I expected at all when knowing Thich Nhat Hanh, knowing who he is as a teacher, I found the teachers on the app were quite interesting, quite diverse. So definitely check it out. And then I'm actually going to add one more bonus that I really like just because I'm going to shout them out. Uh, there's this guy, Angelo Di Lulo, who teaches a uh, form of self-inquiry. It's not exactly Buddhist, but he is deeply inspired by Zen teachings. So I do feel there's a strong Zen element in his teachings, although they seem almost more like Ramana Maharshi Advaita Vedanta style teaching. It's basically just asking who am I or what am I or what is this? It's this basic form of inquiry where you ask about the nature of self and reality, and then you just kind of let your experience do its thing. So you ask, who am I or what am I? And then you feel into the answer. You feel into the mystery of what it is. Ramana Maharshi has this great quote around this question, who am I? He says, asking who am I is not meant to get an answer, but asking the question is meant to dissolve the questioner. So you're not really looking for a cognitive or a conceptual answer. You're actually trying to feel in to the reality beyond the self. That's the point of asking this question. If you keep asking who am I or what am I, and you keep getting answers in your head, that's okay. But let those go and feel into like the, the non-cognitive or the kind of bigger mind aspect of awareness. So Angelo DeLulo is a really interesting guy, a really fantastic teacher 
on inquiry, the best I've come across, and I've looked at a lot of them. He did a really great intro interview series on ZDog MD's YouTube channel. So I'm going to link to the first video of that. And then from the first one, you can watch the rest. I think that's the best intro. Uh, from there, you can go to his YouTube channel where he does literally a new video every day in between like six minutes and 12 minutes. Plus he does interviews with people who have awakened, uh, many of them. His whole channel is about helping people awaken and looking at awakening directly, not through building up concentration in your meditation practice, but through inquiry, through inquiring into the nature of reality. And his pointing out instructions or his instructions for exploration are really fantastic. So if that is something that interests you around awakening through this inquiry, there's no better source than him. He also has a book called Awake, It's Your Turn. Uh, it's like $10 on the Kindle or something like that. And then there you can order a copy too. But you can find everything that's in that book on his YouTube channel. So you don't need to buy the book if you don't want to spend the money. His YouTube channel is an excellent resource in itself. Okay, so that's it. Well, the last one would be me, my channel. My channel is a good resource if you're into meditation, Buddhist meditation, all that. Although mine isn't as complete as those other ones. I kind of jump around and give tips and whatnot. So if you're looking for a more, um, I don't know, regimented or more complete or supportive path that's more kind of clear, then I would check out those resources. For me, it's more like, these are some practices that may work for you around these specific topics. And I really want to encourage you to explore, dip your toes in, see what works for you, and then develop your own practice based off that. Anyhow, I hope you liked the video. If you have any other suggestions about free resources, you can leave them in the comments. If you have any questions or if you just want to say hi, definitely comment. You can like the video, subscribe, all those things. I appreciate it. Oh, sign up for my newsletter too to keep tabs. Again, link below. And thank you.